In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a seamless pattern. I am going to be creating a tossed pattern, also known as a random pattern. So to start, we want to open up Illustrator. I'm going to click Illustrator, and then I'm going to click New File. So it's really important here that we want to create um, a custom size document. We are going to be creating a four inch by four inch document. So you want to make sure that you select inches over here and you input four inches by four inches and then you click create. So we have a four inch by four inch artboard now and this is going to be um, our pattern tile. So the first thing I want to do is I want to save my document. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to import my um, pattern research and inspiration just as a reference for you all. So I'm going to go to File, and I'm going to go down to Place, and I'm going to find my um, inspiration. So the next thing I want to do is I want to create my color palette. So I'm going to import my color palette and create it here, and then I'm going to show you um, how to start creating your objects and arranging them to create a print. So I've um, imported my color palette and I've created a color group. You highlight all these, click that little folder and you can name your color group and it will be right here in your swatches. So now it's all about creating your elements. So I'm going to show you how to create a flower. I'm going to start by grabbing the ellipse tool and I'm going to draw a circle. Let me make that a prettier color. Okay, so I have a circle here and I'm going to select this bottom point here, the direct select tool, and I'm going to pull it down to create like a petal. So now I want this petal to be rotated all the way around the center point. And there's a really easy way to do this. With this selected, I'm going to go to the rotate tool and the easiest way to get to the rotate tool is by hitting R on your keyboard, R for rotate, and it brings up these little crosshairs, and you'll see that rotate tool over here is selected. So I'm going to put these crosshairs in this center point because this is the point that I want the petal to rotate around. To start, I wanna click by holding down option and pressing click. And so it brings up this dialog box. And I can input a different um, amount of degrees that I want this petal to be rotated. I'm gonna go with 45 degrees, and I'm gonna click Copy. And there it has rotated one petal. I want this to continue. I want more petals until it's all the way filled, all the way around the center point. And to do that, all I need to do is hit Command D on an apple. Maybe it's a uh, Control D on um, uh, Windows. But I'm hitting Command D and it's just repeating the action. So now I have a whole flower here. So I'm gonna spend some time creating some more flowers, and then I'm gonna show you how to arrange them and create a pattern. Okay, now I have a variety of flowers, different colors and shapes, and so now I wanna begin arranging my pattern. So I'm gonna start moving things around and kind of seeing what feels right. I wanna make sure that, you know, things of the same color aren't touching um, too closely. And then I also want to make sure that there's not any two of the same flowers touching each other too closely either. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time rearranging. It's going to start coming together more in this next step. So essentially, this artboard is like a tile. And what I mean by that is that, you know, it's, it's going to be repeated like a tile in the bathroom. So, you know, whatever is on the left needs to line up with what's on the right. What's on the top needs to line up with what's on the bottom. So everything outside of this tile needs to be down here on the inside of this tile so that when it repeats, it will be seamless. So I need to copy whatever is hitting the outside, these this bounding box edge, I need to copy it to the opposing side of the artboard. To start, I'm going to copy this pink flower. So I'm going to copy this down 
I'm going to transform it. I'm going to right click. I'm going to transform and I'm going to click move. So I want to move this down to the bottom. So that's a vertical move. So I want to have zero input for horizontal and I'm going to click four inches vertically and I'm going to click copy and it copies it four inches down. I input four inches because that is the size of the artboard because this is also on the left side. I want to copy it to the right side. So I'm selecting both of those and I'm going to right click, click transform and click move. So now it is a horizontal move, four inches, and it's not moving vertically. And I hit copy, and it copies over here to the right side. I'm already noticing that there's some things I'm going to want to move around. All right, so this is looking a little more balanced. So now um, I haven't copied these two items on the right. So I want to copy the items here on the right to the left. So I'm going to select both those by holding down shift and select. I'm going to right click, I'm going to click transform and then move. And so I'm going to move these horizontally by negative four inches and vertically by zero inches. And I'm going to click copy and it moves it over there exactly four inches. Okay, so there's also something here on the bottom that isn't on the top. So I'm going to select this here. I'm going to click transform. I'm going to move it vertically, negative four inches. So it's going up I'm going to click copy. And now it's copied up there. So now I think I have everything that is on the edge copied over. And now I can start making some adjustments to the inside of my pattern. So I'm going to start moving some of the things around that are not on the edge. I can move these objects freely because they don't, they're not on the edge. Um, they're just in the center. Maybe I want to move um, some this on the edge. Maybe I want it to be, you know, in a little more this way. To do that, I need to select them both. And then I can move them, but they have to be both selected and they have to be moved exactly the same amount. So now that they're selected, I can move them with my arrow keys. So I'm just nudging these with the arrows on my keyboard. And this allows me to move them together in exact increments. Now that I kind of have these moved around a bit, I want to create a background color. So I'm going to go to my rectangle tool and I'm going to click and release and I'm going to input four by four to create a rectangle the exact size of my artboard. And I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to make this the light pink color. And so I am going to uh, make sure that this is lined up exactly with my artboard. That's super important that there is no white on any edge. And then I'm going to send it to the back. And so now I have a background color. I want to create another rectangle. This rectangle is going to be the defining edge for this pattern. So I'm going to copy this background rectangle and I'm going to click edit, paste in place, and that's going to paste it on top. I actually don't want this light pink rectangle. I want it to be a completely clear rectangle. So I'm going to remove this fill and I don't have a stroke. So now I have a rectangle it's still selected and it has no fill and no stroke. So the next thing I want to do, and this is very important, and as I want to send this to the very back of my artboard. So I send it to the very back. And if you want to make sure, you can go over here to the layers panel. You can click this little arrow to look at all your layers. And you can see here now that there is a clear rectangle in the back. And this clear rectangle is what is going to, to define your pattern. It defines the pattern edges. So now it's time to create um, a swatch out of this and see how it looks repeated. So I'm going to select all of these items that are a part of my pattern here, and I'm just going to drag them into the swatches palette. And you can see right there, 
that a swatch was created. So I'm going to zoom out now, create a little bit of room for drawing a bigger rectangle. And I'm drawing a bigger rectangle, and I'm filling it. And it looks like everything is repeated. If there is like a line and something isn't connecting, it's likely because you forgot to copy something. So if I had forgotten to copy something that's on the edge, you would see a seam. And that's really easy to fix. You just, if you have been nudging things um, not together, that might also cause things to line, not line up. But this is looking just fine for a print. So now I want to show you how to scale this pattern. So it kind of looks pretty big here in this swatch, and maybe I want it to be a smaller, ditzier print. I'm going to select this rectangle here, and I'm going to right click, go down to transform, and hit scale. And this dialog box pops up. I, I don't want to transform the actual rectangle. I just want to transform the pattern. So I'm going to make sure that transform objects is not checked, but transform patterns is checked. And I have 50% already put in here, and I think that's going to be good. So I'm going to click OK. And there it is. I have a smaller pattern within that rectangle now. Now it's time to show you how to recolor your swatches. So I'm going to make a smaller swatch here with that. All right, and I'm going to copy this. So I'm just going to holding down shift, copy it over here. So now I can create a new colorway with this. And I'll just do it one more time since I want to have a few different colorways here. So the easiest way to change the colors is to go up here um, in this menu. You have this little color wheel. And if you hover over it, it says recolor artwork. And I'm going to click that. And it brings up this box. What I want to do is I want to go to advanced options. So I click that and it brings up this new dialog box. The easiest way is to kind of let the computer come up with some arrangements for you. And that is done by this um, icon right here on the left. It says randomly change color order. So this is random. It might not be exactly what you want, but you can click it and it will give you some new options. So if you just click, keep clicking, that'll give you some different variations. I can click this swatch now and do the same thing. I can click advanced options then I can click random. I can keep clicking until I find something that I like. And those swatches have been automatically added over here to the swatches panel. If you want to change your colors more manually instead of with a random option, you can do that in the same window. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to go back to this window. I'm going to click advanced options. And I see here where it says current colors and new color. So let's say you know you want the orange to become pink. You can click into that and go to color swatches. And let's say you want to pick um, the dark pink and click OK. So now orange is becoming pink. Well, now you want to make sure the pink becomes another color. So I'm going to click um, this and say I want it to become orange now. And that looks good. And maybe I want to switch the brown and the yellow. So click in there, go to my color swatches. The brown's going to become yellow. And I'm going to make yellow become brown. And I'm going to click OK. And so now I have like a slightly different variation. So you can kind of manually change colors just like that. So I've also uploaded some examples of how I want you to present your projects um, or present your patterns. You are going to create a letter size document 
and you are going to put these swatches on there. So let's say these are my three swatches. I'm going to go to File. I'm going to create a new um, letter document. And it doesn't matter um, which orientation. And I'm going to copy these swatches over. So I have them in here. So I could just have them be squares. Um, but I want to do something different with this presentation. So if I click here, I see that my swatches are appearing in my swatches panel here. So I'm going to draw a rectangle. I'm going to draw three rectangles. So I'm copying these. That looks good. Nice and balanced. And I'm going to um, Let's see, bring over my color palette. I have it here in this document. So I'm going to copy that over and bring that up there. This is how you should present your artwork. Um, you can do different layouts. You can do squares. You can do it vertically. Um, I have op uh, examples inside the project folder. Yeah, let me know if you have any questions, and I'm excited to see what y'all come up with.